Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So in the previous tutorials we saw or we had a, a look at gathering information of our particular target or a particular host. So it could be uh, just that you know, uh, gather information, you can also go ahead and gather information via social engineering or you can go ahead and simply gather information through the techniques that I have shown you previously that is through using Whois and DNS stick, DNS enum or the DNS mapping and even the harvester to go ahead and gather the IP addresses as well as the emails. So the next step after you go ahead and gather information would be to analyze the information and then attack the specific party. So uh, how are we going to do that exactly? There are two ways of doing that. One is through social engineering and the another aspect of approach would be to go ahead and directly attack using the viruses or worms or trojans that you have created by yourself. So but there is still uh, one question in mind that using uh, technical knowledge to go ahead uh, into hacking uh, it is good but still it's uh, not that easy because you never know what kind of information are you going to give out while you're going to go ahead and uh, target the attack or let's say if uh, the person has IDS already and you go ahead and try to create some malware and if the IDS that is intrusion detection system uh, go ahead and fix up your uh, antivirus then you mean uh, your virus will be caught and you may not be able to perform the attack and that can be quite complicated to go ahead and write down program each time uh, you have to go ahead and attack different companies or different uh, persons. So at that point of time social engineering comes in place. So as you can see the definition that I have found somewhere on the internet that your softwares that have been created by any person or any software engineer uh, they can be applied patches but there is no patch for human stupidity. So that is social engineering. You go ahead, uh, try to use your charm or your techniques to or your information to go ahead and gather much more information by you going ahead and calling them or using emails through phishing and other techniques to go ahead and gather information. Social engineering is a very vast term. It consists of technical technicalities as well as uh, non-technicalities as well. So what exactly is social engineering? So in this tutorial uh, today I will be taking you through what is social engineering, what are the different types of social engineering. So there are five different types, waiting, phishing, quid pro quo, pretexting and diversion theft which is normally conning people and what would be the ways to go ahead and prevent them. So this would be, this is, these are which I would be teaching you today. So to start with what is social engineering? It starts with human interaction. Attacker uses uh, human interaction to go and opt obtain or compromise specific uh, information. Uh, the attacker may be uh, an, a respectable person and you may not even know that the uh, person is trying to be what you may not even have thought of. Attacker may appear unassuming or respectable or it may even, even pretend to be a new employee, repairman or an old boss of your trying to gather information. He may even offer credentials to go for a new network that he has created, something like that, so that he might try to fool you, something like that. And uh, the final thing would be to assembling the, all the pieces together. So by asking enough questions, the attacker may piece information together to infiltrate a company network. He may even attempt uh, to gather information from many sources so that when you ask him any question, uh, he may be able to go ahead and give you out any specific answer that he wants so that you will be confident enough to give him out the details that he wants. So Kevin Mitnick was the, the, he the most famous social engineer of all time. He was dubbed as the most dangerous hacker in the world. So uh, as you can see it's written on his show that I am not a hacker, I am security professional. That was after he was convicted in jail. He always used to tell that people are mostly gen helpful especially to someone who is nice, knowledgeable or insistent. So for example, I am just walking down the lane and I uh, there is some prop uh, person who has some kind of problem. I will without any hesitant I will surely go ahead and try to help him out. But that is not always good because the person who is uh, uh, over there standing who is in some kind of problem who is a damsel in distress, uh, he may not even be uh, a damsel in distress. He may even be the attacker who is trying to attack us. And uh, uh, Kevin Mitnick, uh, 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 let's say, Kevin Mitnick used uh, his social engineering skills or uh, he was even called as a phone freak. Uh, he used that to go ahead and gather as much information as he could and 
later uh, he was caught he used uh, he stole billions of dollars just through uh, phone freaking and phone freaking means just calling the third party and asking him some specific questions by you being an uh, a legitimate party or convincing the third party that you are a legitimate party so he mitnim was even told that uh, asked to go ahead and put in a solitary confinement uh, because the lawyer even convinced the judge that he had the ability to start a nuclear war by whistling into a payphone so that's not this may be a bit exaggerated but you never know because as he was told that uh, the USA himself USA itself was uh, behind Kevin Mitnick for a very long time and the worst part of it, it was that whenever he was about to get caught uh, but he was not caught or he narrowly escaped some situation he always used to leave donuts for uh, the cops over there uh, just to tease them or so he was a very not only a good a uh, phone freaker but he was also very good in escaping things so this is how he was so he hardly used all of his uh, uh, knowledge to go ahead and attack or social he only used most of the time social engineering uh, to go ahead and gather information so he even has his own book named as art of deception so he, these are the few points that he always told on each and every conference that he had people always want to be helpful and that's why they are easily being targeted so what uh, the hackers do are that they try to gain a level of trust in avoid, in order to avoid any conflict between the person and finally when the uh, the party has enough trust in the uh, third party or in the hacker uh, it's all about getting access to information that people think that that is not that important so let's say for example i go ahead and i call you let's assume that you are staying in united states and so i go ahead and call you and i gather information such as your name your addresses your data i will say that i'm calling you from let's say for example or let's take an example of india over here i'll just go ahead and call you and i'll tell you that i'm calling you from the census department and we are trying to gather information about how much person lives in a family how many persons live, live in a family so i uh, can just give me out their names and the date of birth and you'll think that Oh yeah, no problem. What's the problem in giving a date of birth? So you just go ahead and uh, tell all of your names, give out your date of birth, and the person may even ask for email ID just so that you can go ahead and register you. You may even give that out, and when you ask any question related to any census, human census population, he may even give you uh, that out. But what you don't know is that uh, as soon as you go ahead and give out the information, he's just going ahead and entering all of those things. under your net banking or your phone banking technique whatever you use and he will straight away go ahead and use uh, let's say for example the forgot password option in your net banking and he will easily go ahead and gain your uh, all your details about your credit cards or debit cards or even your bank status as whether it's overdrawn or you have sufficient funds in your account which is according to me quite risky so uh, and the b- worst part is that let's say for example you are a male and if a lady calls you then uh, humans always have a tendency that if a lady calls then automatically they have a soft corner for them and they always want to be helpful for the girl they will never hang up on any specific girl and so uh, whenever you hear a nice voice on the phone you always want to be helpful and that is not as good so you need to be sure you need to be smart as to what the person in front of you uh, he, what is actually uh, his uh, achieving uh, trying to achieve so social engineering cannot be blocked by technology or alone or or i can say it cannot it can never be uh, uh, blocked by technology because uh, the only fault uh, that in social engineering would be of the person not of any specific company and when you say social engineering cannot be blocked by technology uh, you may always need to make sure that you are smart and you're not going to give out any information even to any random party and people normally nowadays don't normally think much of that because let's say for example people normally go ahead and create their accounts on facebook and they give out all the information on facebook such as where they live and what their phone numbers are what their email id or even um, the pics they take uh, that even they that gives such much information about what this person likes how does it wear so that can be uh, went ahead and created a specific amount of information uh, they can be used to go ahead and create virtual personality of your and anyone can go ahead and think in your way and try to gain information on your behalf so that is one way of going ahead and getting information so that would be it for this tutorial in the next tutorial i'll be starting with the types of social engineering and how can you go ahead and defend them